Okay, everyone, so I just finished a new mod here. Uh, something that's going to be useful mostly to you arcade owners out there looking to uh, plug in a composite or S video circuit. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of applications, but for my specific application, I'm pretty happy for it. This is a video decoder, not to be confused with a video encoder, which takes RGB and makes your composite S video. Uh, this is something that actually takes composite and S-video, which I've yet to add. I uh, just finished it today for the composite. But this takes composite and converts it to analog RGB. A much more complicated thing to achieve, actually. And um, not an easy circuit to build from scratch, which is why I've repurposed a car... 7-inch uh, LCD monitor here. And this doesn't really have any name to it. Um, says here the seven inch car TV and monitor widescreen TFT LCD doesn't even have a serial number. Uh, so it's, it's a piece of, uh, technology that's, you know, made from, I think it's made in Taiwan or something. And, uh, the important thing about these is to have a pure analog decoder, or at least an analog decoder that works with a microcontroller that's on board that doesn't need programming. And the reason why I use this is because I want to plug in a composite signal into my 36-inch RGB monitor. Now, this monitor was modified for RGB a while back. It's a JVC, you know, consumer, consumer end monitor originally. But I had to take out all the decoder circuitry to make it have a pure RGB input and decided it was too much work to try to re reestablish that and fit those motherboards back in and take out this huge TV and do work on it. So instead, I've I've built this decoder circuit. Um, like I said, this will also work for your arcade cabinets and anything else where you want to have a composite or S-video input and an RGB output. Um, this circuit may also do a component according to the data sheet. I think it will also take a component input. So... Um, yeah, let me explain a little bit of it. The The reason why I use this is because it's ha it has the uh, chip called the TDA8361, and uh, really useful. I'm used to the, uh, the sharp versions of these chips are much more common. The IR3Y29 is the most common. And uh, basically what you do is you find, you know, you find your data sheet, your, your composite input, and then the RGB output before it goes to the, the LCD uh, TFT chip that actually converts the RGB signals from analog into digital for the LCD. Uh, one thing that's really cool about this, which is one thing that makes me wish I knew where to source more of these so I could tell people, is the functions are actually displayed through the analog RGB output. Uh, this is actually really uncommon and uh, normally only the TFT outputs will have the on-screen display like that. Really nice stuff, because that means you can, you know, just adjust everything really easily here and uh, makes life pretty sweet. Uh, one thing that was really tricky with this was getting all the levels correct. Uh, had some kind of interesting adjustments inside that I had to sort of rewire and make my own here. These are, these are my own RGB pots. These are trimmer pots. They're nice and conveniently located here on the side. That's red, that's green, that's blue. So you can tweak them because they're trimmer pots. You can tweak them to just the perfect uh, color. And I'm pretty happy with it. The image is a little bit on the brighter side. Um, you'll notice the black level is not perfect. I believe that's because the black level is controlled by the microcontroller and the manufacturers kept it higher for the LCD and it's not as perfect for a television output but it's it's livable I mean it's really not bad um, I've tried tweaking it quite a bit through different circuits but I'm pretty happy with this let me show you the reason why I built this circuit specifically for a Game Boy TV now I've modified this for RGB but thanks to the retro RGB website. But the RGB is very bright and uh, it's a little blocky. And this is one of the 
I'll try to set the camera down here for an instance for, this, uh, for a second. Uh, this is the one of the only instances I've ever come across where composite um, I've actually preferred to RGB. So here you'll see Castlevania. Uh, this is Harmony of Dissonance. Amazing game. Uh, very bright, like a very bright RGB picture there. And even though that's crisp and that's how it should be, um, it's coming straight from the uh, the analog RGB from the, the Game Boy Advance TV, the innovation product. Um, Innovation's the uh, manufacturer. Take a look at it now with composite. It's it's a much uh, you can, you can adjust it to be a slightly darker image, and the blurriness actually contributes to the smooth edges of things. Um, it smooths the edges a little bit, and uh, especially the blue highlight around your character is not so pronounced uh, because blues just don't translate as well in composite. It's kind of funny. It's you're taking some of the flaws of the format and uh, using it to, uh, to its advantage in a strange way. And uh, I actually gotta say, I, I prefer playing this in composite. We'll see how long that lasts, but I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, the black level's not perfect, but other than that, it's, it's really quite decent, and uh, this video isn't exactly gonna do it justice. Uh, but I recommend taking open those, uh, opening up those old TFT LCD displays and looking for those sharp IR3Y chips or the uh, TDA8361 if you want to build your own. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.